Let's look at air control system. I hope by now you realize we took care of the system pressurization. Let's look at air control. Two basic types of air control system. One would be the air control system where the standard expansion tank, and this is where the water and the air is touching each other in the expansion tank. The compression expansion tank has to be above the air separator so we can move by gravity back and forth. The air can move back and forth and the tank has to be above the tank. This is the system where I would say 5 to 10% of the volume out there. You're going to see these primarily on older projects. They work great. So you've got a makeup valve, pressure reducing valve, you've got an expansion tank, you've got a roll air troll, you're pumping away from the system, and you want the hottest water you can get in there. In this case, we've got the boiler water going into the air separator, and that's an air control system. How about the air elimination system? In the air elimination system, we're going to be using a bladder tank. And you might note here, now the bladder tank can be at the same elevation as air separator. The bladder tank does not have to be above the air separator. In these older systems, the, one of the biggest problems was we might have a 500-gallon tank up in the air above a little air troll, and how do you structurally put it up there? The nice thing about a bladder tank is that physically smaller, and you can just sit on right beside the air separator on the floor. They're going to be on the floor of the equipment room, no big deal. We're going to eliminate the air through a high-capacity automatic air vent. See, the air separator here has the high-capacity automatic air vent on the, on the very top of the air separator. So any air that we wring out of this water gets dumped into the air separator, I mean, excuse me, gets dumped into the high-capacity automatic air vent, and we get rid of it. We've got a pressure-reducing valve, makeup valve there to control the pressure, point of no pressure change. The bladder tank is right, just hooked right in on the, between the pump and the air separator, great air elimination system. And for the record, the water in the tank is not in contact with the air in the tank. We have it under pressure. We pressurize the bladder tank. Therefore, it runs quite well, but make sure you understand that this is a great system, and it's probably 90 95% of new projects are going this way. So, a little fine note would be try to avoid putting the bladder tank directly under the pipe or directly over the pipe. We don't want trash getting plugged in anything up and we don't want to have an air pocket trapped there. So that's kind of the reasons for that. So pipe air vent discharge to drain the 107A, the, the vent from that should go to drain to get it down the drain so you don't get a wet floor if it starts leaking on you a little bit. And here's a little picture of that. The float actuator, they're high capacity air vents, they're heavy duty, rubbing cast iron and you want to pipe these things to a drain somewhere in case you get a little water coming out with the air. So there are two types of pressurized tanks. I think we talked about them earlier. And again, this is the bladder to pre where, where the air is in the bladder pressurized. The bladder tank, the bladder can be taken out and replaced. The diaphragm tanks are throw away. You cannot. That's the difference in a bladder and a diaphragm, about that simple. And we ship them from the factory at 12 pounds. Remember, we're going to have to pre-charge these tanks on the job site to the makeup pressure at that elevation to make sure when we start off they're 100% full of air. 